Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 7th of May 2024. Uh, around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Mark White, and Hervé Lemur. We most probably won't have Bruno Verharten. Stephanie is off, and Kevin is off as well. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the release to the weekly release 2.457 has been delayed of one hour uh, because the initial attempt failed. Uh, I've opened and closed an issue. The certificate, the sorry, the credential that our system uses to reach the vault in order to get the certificate used for signing uh, failed because the credential was expired. We did not track this uh, <clears throat> this credential anywhere. It has been rotated, and then I've opened and uh, audit and wrote everything on the issue. Uh, so now it's being built. So we should expect packages in uh, one hour at the end of our meeting, more or less. Is there any question on this one? Um, for the record, I've added the calendar uh, item, even if we don't have notification that if we have something. And now the credential has an explicit uh, expiration date, which will be end of August. So that means we might be able to find a solution with Stefan Technique that we are using on the public repositories on Terraform that should open pull request in order for us to get notification, which is way more efficient than calendars because notification aren't shared. Uh, however, that's a private repository and that should stay private. We don't want to manage that specific credential uh, on a public repository at all because it's really too sensitive. Um, so yeah, we will have to find a solution, but at least we have uh, countermeasures here. And we can see the expiration date on the Azure console as well. Anything else? No, okay. thanks for doing that. Sorry that sorry that we expired. So, should should I have been detecting that in reading the build logs? Was there a message in the build logs that said, "Hey, this credential will expire at such and such a time"? No, it's not uh, written on the build logs at least. Now it's okay. written on a private repo. So, at least. Right. so maybe we could have something on release CI that's on the notification when it detects. We could have a kind of health check, but yeah. Uh, I don't think it's worth the effort, but anyone interested is absolutely welcome to to specify something. Thanks. Um, the change log is in progress as well, I guess. Uh, okay. I don't have anything else for the weekly release. Um, second announcement, uh, we had the security advisory plugins on the last uh, Thursday because uh, Wednesday was uh, off for most of Europe. Uh, everything went well and we had plugin updated in, in the same day on all of our controllers. Um, a, re a quick reminder, it is... Banking day is chaos, chaos in Europe, at least, uh, in May. So expect a low bandwidth from the team. Actually, it's almost summertime in Europe. Therefore, expect <laughs> low bandwidth from the team. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Do you have other announcements? One, two, three, none, okay. None from me. Uh, just let's have a look on the upcoming calendar. So next Thursday, we will have a weekly that will be the uh, uh, Thursday, no, Tuesday, oh, oh, oh. Tuesday 14. The next LTS will be next week on Wednesday, Alex Brandes is released lead. So most probably we will have an early release uh, given his time zone. Uh, so that version will be 2.452.1. Uh, so as usual, we'll have to spend a bit of time to deploy that version to all of our controllers. 
and that LTS will be the last item of the infrastructure uh, to upgrade in embedded GDKs to the latest patches uh, released two weeks ago. Iterative testing looks good. Cool. Infra CI worked at least one week with that version, so <laughs> no problem for us uh, as well. Do we have announced advisory? We don't. We do not. Okay, so an A. Uh, next major event, I don't think it's worth keeping that item on the list. I'll remove it. I need to update the template. In actually, the wait, well, actually, let me put one because there is oh, one. Good. Okay. Um, the Open Source Summit, Open Source Summit Europe. Oh, good. Is uh, in September uh, with some CDF, some CDF content. So um, I right now I think we hope to send Bruno Verachten. Cool. To the to the event, is he going to submit a talk with Timurin? And I, that, of that I don't know. That's a, not a bad idea, but I I think we'll send him whether he does a talk or not. Cool, good to know. So let's keep that item then. Okay. Any question on the announcement upcoming calendar? Something to add to change to discuss? I'll be off the next two weeks. Good reminder. It was clear in my mind, but yes, um, RV of next two weeks. Stefan of this week. Do you have a weeks or days off, Mark? Uh, I'll be out uh, next Wednesday giving a talk at uh, Mile High Agile. But other than that, not until end of May. Okay. I'll Mark, take uh... Mark. Mark is at Disneyland after <laughs> the during the last week of May. <laughs> okay. Something else. That's it. Cool. Um, just a view on cloud budgets. So. Uh, I'm back to trying to prepare properly this meeting after a disastrous uh, preparation on the whole month of April from my side. Um, first of first of all, Azure award on Azure uh, consumption in April we hit the 4.4k, so that's uh, a bit that's two to three hundred dollars more than anticipated. That's hundred uh, dollar more than our goal. We are still below uh, the danger the danger zone though. We still have margin. However, that will be better trying to stay at four four point two. So we will have margin, especially for August and September when we will move CI Jenkins IO controller out of the subscription, the sponsor subscription to this one. The cost of uh, CI Jenkins IO should be handled for September, October, November, December, if we stay at 4.5K every month. However, that means no margin at all, and we need margin. Uh, we identified two main culprits that made us uh, pass the expected thresholds. Uh, we forgot about the update center file storage. Uh, but since we started in March to update it at the same time in Shadow uh, as the current production update center, we started to send a lot of write transaction, which cost a lot on file storages. So we changed uh, uh, three or four days ago. We fixed that, move, uh, moving it to a premium file storage like we do for Get Jenkins IO. And we already can see that the daily costs decreased the uh, all April and the 1st of May, it was around $17 daily. And since uh, uh, the past four days, it has been 4.6. It's a static cost. So that is quite a decrease. We had a few leftovers that Hervé and I forgot. Uh, uh, I left over some resources, uh, backup mainly. All of the leftover 
could or should be done on the sponsored subscription because we have plenty credits here in order to not uh, cost us on the CDF budget. Quick note, we might have two other areas to gain money in the future. I don't think we should focus on this, but depend on the condition, it's good to have this on our radar. Um, the two biggest consumers now are the two Kubernetes clusters. Um, that raises a few questions. Is Kubernetes even useful for running web services, given the costs it has? Uh, and a less generic question, we worked on IRM64 on a part of the cluster. But that means now we have not pools on IRM and not pools on Intel. We weren't able to move everything on IRM, which means we have an overhead due to that. And that cost is absolutely eclipsing the IRM cost efficiency that we were expecting. One of the main blocker is mirror bits because mirror bits is only running on Intel. So uh, we, could, we could continue, but that means we might need to study carefully um, is it worth continuing with ARM at least on public cluster? It is absolutely worth on the private one, but on, on the public one, the question remains. Um, and um, yeah, we might have room for improvement here for the cost. That's the general message. ARM, Kubernetes usage, and Kubernetes packing. Yes, sir, Mark? So, so that is that because we cannot reduce the size of the, the the count of of nodes to zero on the auto scaling is that what's oh, happening there or no it's not that... not at all no okay it's because uh, you always have an overhead with kubernetes that overhead is the what we call the kubelet that's an agent running on each node which role is to communicate with the api control plane and it will orchestrate locally on the machine, the containers, pods, and resources. This one and all the side services as well. Uh, Cluster-wide, uh, we, you need some services such as Datadog collection for us. Mm -hmm. uh, the CSI driver in order to spin up or to be able to mount persistent volume. The CNI plugins that ensure that we have an overlay network across all the nodes. And uh, the, the auto scaler controller that's a set of pod highly available so we have at least two and they are watching for events and running all of these technical components have a cost um, it's most of them are there only because we are using kubernetes so compared to having a virtual machine you clearly have an overhead that overhead is absolutely visible on the price so the question is even do we need kubernetes at the size we are operating Maybe it's worth using it if you have thousands of services, but clearly we are under the usual limits. Whereas in, when we, th we think about agents, ephemeral agent for Jenkins, that is absolutely worth the effort. But for web services, I'm uh, not that sure. The, um, let's say the balance is always questionable. However, uh, changing back from Kubernetes to full fully fledged virtual machine is quite the effort. So that's why we might think in terms of optimization. We have the RM Intel issue. We have sizing properly the node. And finally, something we discussed with Hervé earlier today, maybe not splitting everything. Right now, we have a system pools. We have application pools. And we could try to pack as much as possible, at least on the public one. But mm -hmm. this is the biggest cost on the infrastructure right now, on the Azure infrastructure. Thank Stefan you, also sir. put it that manage Redis is also quite costly and maybe given the usage of Redis we have, it's one base for get Jenkins IO and one for update Jenkins IO. It's tiny set of uh, databases. So maybe running it ourselves because we don't need a, a low level persistence here. And the cost of, a, of, uh, of that managed service is quite high and I think we could gain on running it ourselves in the future. Thank you. Thanks very much. I had missed the distinction between web services and ephemeral agents, and they are clearly very different loads. Thanks. That, that makes it very clear. Thank you very much. Um, now, is there any question on the Azure CDF? 
right now on May, we have consumed 800, almost 900. Uh, forecast is around, so forecast in Azure is broken right now because it says almost 5K. But if you do a mathematic rule, <laughs> you clearly are around 4.2K. Any question? No. Uh, as a sponsorship, we have we have a steady consumption right now around 2K, 2K and a few hundreds. We still have a 30K left. Thanks, Mark, for uh, moving the deadline to end of August. So now our goal is to consume all of these credits on the upcoming three months. Uh, we, we have an issue on that topic. Digital Ocean is steady as well, uh, still around 800. That should decrease until end of August because we will move most of the container workload on the Azure sponsorship. Uh, so Digital Ocean should decrease until September and then we will uh, increase consumption back uh, once we reach that milestone. Uh, AWS, um, I didn't have time to connect uh, on the AWS accounts, but the costs uh, were really steady. We expect that cost to decrease once we will have moved the workload on Azure sponsorship. And finally, we haven't consumed anything on the new AWS sponsored uh, account because we decided to use the Azure sponsorship credits first. Oh, yes, good point. Thanks, Mark. So we, uh, Mark submitted the request for 2025 donation from AWS, meaning we will have these credits to consume on September to January 2024, 2025. And after we hope that we might have credits here, otherwise we'll have to use Digital Ocean and find other sponsors. Any question on the budget? Thanks for tracking it. Thanks for the reporting format. I believe we should. I, I must do this and prepare every week. That's important because uh, we just saw in April that we missed the consumption here. We could have cooked that earlier. So uh, I will need your help uh, on this, I believe. Um, let's go on the task. We were able to finish the following tasks. So, uh, Expiration of credential on release CI. That has been fixed. Everything has been documented on the issue. I don't know if you have questions on this one. Take time to read it because I created it one hour uh, earlier. But I've tried to split the problem on the issue definition, then the technical analysis to give you points on the path if someone needs to do it instead of me in, in August, and then the, the actions. Any question? Mm. Um, we had the uh, two anti-spam system triggering uh, triggered for account creation because the two users had uh, their IP in a range that is forbidden. So I've created manually their account for now, and we have a pull request on the account tab that need to be deployed to production that will remove that faulty range. Uh, Tim uh, uh, mentioned that maybe we should remove the IP deny list, uh, except for the, the IPs that we know are spammers, but it's just a few. Hervé mentioned there is a dynamic service that could be used or requested in the future, uh, at least on account app releases, that's, that hosts uh, usual uh, no, um, IPs known as spamming. Maybe. Uh, as a, yeah. Sorry? As a first step, maybe... Uh, undo the banner hammer uh, on IP, the one with only two digits. So that's a uh, old change the pull request from 27, uh, 2016. You mentioned uh, when yes, you I'm not sure uh, why, remo why should we remove it? Given because the it's, risk it's of being fresh. spammed immediately, is there? As you un, uh, undone uh, a range ban mm -hmm. by replacing individual uh, this range by individual IP, I, I was wondering if we should do the same for the other range. Oh, 
yes just drink on is... the range or not on every ip uh... yes it's just that will takes at least one hour one hour to deploy and eventually half a day to roll back if we start seeing spam. So that's why I'm not, I would prefer spending that time finding a solution to replace the account app because uh, the effort uh, implied here is high. Maybe uh, it's just search and replace at first sight, but you have to validate to search for each IP. Is it still blacklisted? I mean, it took me one hour to do the change. And okay. I know I'm not the fastest here, but I'm not the slowest either. Okay. So I, I was writing a first thing you said that it was re removing the IP uh, filter. I didn't understood that mm -hmm. it was uh, with a new system to ban IP. Okay. That's it. So. I just can... mentioned that you you mentioned that uh, that tool uh, a few months earlier. Uh, but that's the same thing as was team. The problem is that we have limited bandwidth and capacity here. And I would prefer us having to replace Akuntap by something else, which is a higher level because Akuntap is not something we want to keep. It's no one is maintaining uh, the application. Uh, there are plenty of other solutions. We have key clock still running that should be able to do the, the trick. I mean, that, that's a not finished work. We didn't have time to this, but that will be a new priority at a given moment on time. That has been requested by the security team for years. So I would prefer us spending time on this instead. That's why I did a short-term solution for this one. Does it make sense? Yeah. Um, we unlocked the bomb testing help, which was related to Datadog. So uh, bomb builds was stuck because the Datadog plugin uh, corrupted the builds uh, history on CI Jenkins IO, resulting in stuck builds. So thanks uh, for taking care of that. Uh, the issue for Datadog, Datadog is still open. We will discuss about it later. But uh, bomb builds were unblocked immediately. Thank you. We have had a request for account deletion that uh, uh, someone that had their account deleted on LDAP. Uh, when we restored the Jira backup, uh, their account was uh, again associated to a component. Uh, I don't know why, because the, the removal happened before, way, way, way before, but that, that, that has been changed in the um, uh, history, change history on Jira. Uh, back to the release, of the restoration of the backup. So we fixed it and I've set the email in Jira to something not working so they won't be spam if the issue happen again. Um, we have we have had uh, a, tag, a tag unexpectedly created on Jenkins CI Docker, but that has been fixed. So thanks, Hervé, for detecting it swiftly and fixing it. Thanks, Mark, for uh, the help here. Well, so, and as a matter of course, I assume it was okay to delete that tag, given that it only lived for a very few minutes. So, Absolutely. Great, it, okay. The, the good thing is Hervé reacted immediately and stopped the build on Trusted CI, which was the good, the, the, the proper way to go, because that forbids to push images on Docker Hub. So then the tag had no issue. Eventually, someone cloned the repository and had a staling tag, but synchronizing repository would have worked anyway for them after. It's more complicated when the image start to be delivered on the Docker Hub, though. Worst case, that would have been a surprise weekly release. That's not that much a problem, but you, both of you uh, work swiftly to fix this, so thanks. We have had a um, network issue uh, due to a subnet not using the NAT gateway on uh, infra CI. So that should be fixed now. Uh, one of the main issue was uh, it was subnets uh, without the proper uh, outbound IP. So the vault we use for retrieving credential was for bidding access. Uh, initially, it was a label issue. 
leading InfraCI to run Kubernetes management on virtual machines agent instead of container. And same thing, the virtual machine agent were on an area where it was forbidden to access the vault. So that has been fixed and nothing else to add here. Um, we could in the future homogenize uh, and allow both virtual machine or container without caring because they have the same tooling. However, it's better to restrict as much as possible the vault accesses. So I don't mind keeping the situation. If it fails, then we just have to go back because using virtual machine for that should require architectural discussion. Discrepancy in plugin release dates. That one has been quite tricky. Thanks survey for fixing that issue and gave in as well. Looks like uh, you had a lot of work to, to to replay on Algolia. Expired credential uh, looked like uh, at the initial, but not only. Um, I don't know if there is anything you want to... Yeah, the compute was when I removed uh, Blob Sphere, I removed the credential from the pipeline by mistake. That was the main okay. reason why on the 28th of uh, February, the Algolia search uh, starts okay. being not updated. Okay. Good analysis. That okay. That makes sense, and at least there is no there. At least we know what what is the reason, and it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, that makes sense, and it's uh, it's safe. It's not something uh -huh. weirder. I still don't know why the control uh, were uh, rotated on the Algolia admin, but did they have TTL the or something? I don't think so. Because I remember uh, in Digital Ocean, for instance, it's worse the credentials are removed when they reach a TTL, which used to be default and implicit. So <laughs> first time wasn't a good moment. So I believe that might be the same on Algolia. Or someone manually uh, rotated them. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> OK, but. Great work. Now uh, the user is content. They confirm it's working as expected. So perfect, good work. Um, we had issues uh, from chocolatey too many requests, same thing as Docker Hub when we are building our Packer images. Solution has been simple. Now our Packer images are using uh, two outbound IPs instead of one, which spread the request when we have a peak of builds. That should solve. We haven't seen the issue, so I've closed the issue. We haven't seen the problem anymore after the fix, and so I've closed the issue. Don't stay to reopen if you see these errors on the Packer images checks. Award on the GDK patch upgrade campaign. So I've closed the issue just before the meeting because we're able to deliver the last items except the LTS image, but uh, the free. So thanks to the work of Hervé on Docker agent official image, now we were able to release latest agent and inbound agent with the latest GDK and way more changes, including Tamarin uh, installer instead of layers. So less it's on the Docker hub. Uh, so for the infra point of view, it's okay except the LTS that will happen next week, of course. Any question on this one? OK. And again, thanks Harry, for fixing that issue. I started with Adrian, but we were misleading. And in fact, as the adage say, optimization, premature optimization is the root of all evil. That's what happened. We wanted to optimize and not generate report when not needed. The answer is no. It's it's good enough to report every time. Looks like it has been fixed. I've closed the issues uh, because Hervé added a data dog monitor. So that sh we should be alerted if we see uh, the report at zero. And the uh, report always generate a report. So we won't, we should not have the situation anymore of zero lines. Is my understanding correct, Hervé, or did I miss something? No, uh, yeah. Uh, I should probably close my pipeline library pull request since there is no need for it. 
mixed feelings. Uh, it looks a good safety net for other reports. Uh, but yeah, we don't have the case on the other end. Uh, I don't know. Um, I trust your gut feeling. Uh, in any case, since you will be gone two weeks, either you keep it open and you will uh, we will work on this end of May or you close it without any case. I trust you uh, what will be the most useful. Any question on the task we were able to finish? Uh, sorry, my voice is down a bit ill. Um, we had a duplicate issue, so close does not planned. Nothing else to add. Now let's roll on the work in progress. Um, Hervé, you first with Docs Jenkins. Are you? Could you give us a, a summary status? You are muted. The website is live. The issue is almost completed. I'm, I need to create a runbook to for this service. Then uh, it will be in the end of the website maintenance to take care of the improvement for the next steps. It's uh, anything. It's an Nginx uh, website uh, cached behind the uh, Fastly with preview, yeah, as you said on Notify. It's the same. I use the same template as contributor stop Jenkins that I. Use. Cool. Uh, next and last step. Um, just a note that uh, we we discussed survey and high uh, worth sharing here. Um, we will change slightly the architecture of jobs on Infra CI because right now we have a multi-branch job for each of the websites which scan for the master branch. And when the master branch is completed, it's doing CD of the website, uh, which for Jenkins IO is a bit different because that part is on trusted CI for uh, a lot of other reasons. And for pull requests, the pull requests are built, checked, and also we have a deployment of the pull request on the preview website on Netlify. Most of these builds also have a CI builds and CI Jenkins IO. So the pull requests are usually uh, blocked if the CI Jenkins IO check fails because we need the contributor to be able to see the failure and messages. However, we also need at least to build on Infra CI in order to deploy to Netlify. That's the minimum requirement. Something we will want to do is to have two multi-branch pipeline per build on Infra CI. One will only target the main branch and its goal will be to run CD with its own set of credentials without any feedbacks to the user except go or no go. And the other will only have the credentials and the role of publishing a preview to Netlify. That's something we will want to target, but we saw this as part of that issue, but we decided to move it out of the scope because it wasn't a requirement. And that will be mostly job DSL changes on infra -C. Near future to split in multiple job separate CD from um, preview. Deployments. Any question? Mm -hmm. So I believe, Hervé, can you confirm that should unblock Chris for the GSOC project as this was put as a priority to unblock them? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, don't forget to let them aware and test before you are uh, in two weeks off. You might already right. have done that. If Is it already the case? They are already aware that it's ready, I think. Yes. They responded in the issue. Okay, cool. 
So that's what I want to do. Oral team permission has been uh, has been set. So say I have the right uh, say I have the maintainer right or the right uh, uh, permission depending on the team. Cool. So there is only even dates. So there is only even dates that we need to be there. It needs to be discussed in a in a doc CG if he um, to be added in the team in the doc in the maintainer docs maintainer team. Cool. Anything else to add on docs, Jenkins? Are you? No. Thanks for taking care of that in last minutes. That really helps. Now, next subject is the new update center. Uh, so we've worked uh, together. So um, migrated to a new file storage, as we say. So why mentioning it? Because we removed the service and we have to rebuild it from scratch in order to use the new file storage. Um, and pair in review test on update center. Uh, sorry, I mentioned we have migrated, we have validated functionally that the redirects are now working as expected. So that means with all traffic to Apache, then redirects to either get.geo if it's a plugin or the new mirrors that updates the geo that are we created which in fact is the mirror bits then another redirect to a mirror which is cloudflare um uh, okay. Okay, so that means now we have a peer review test on update center two to generate distinct uh, content for the two services. We only want the directory structure with the HT accesses uh, on the uh, Apache server. We don't want that Apache server to serve any file. We just want it to serve redirects. And we don't want the HT accesses files to be ever available on the mirror bits or the mirrors. So for that, we need to introduce a slight change in the update center generation to separate two different W contents. And that's the work in progress, Hervé. I believe you didn't have time because you were on Docs Jenkins IO, or did you, were you able to start the tests? Uh, no, I, I had to recreate the temporary folders on PKG origin, the Jenkins at IO on, on the permanent agent. I had to review my uh, side jobs uh, doing uh, async on this temporary folder as the user is not www data anymore, it's mirror brain. And uh, so, yeah. Um, I don't hear you. I don't hear anything. Sorry, I was muted. There, it's absolutely different from mirror brain. When I, yeah, I have a side job, which is synchronizing the content from WW2 to the, uh, to my temporary uh, folder I'm using in the test branch. And with its initial configuration using www data user, it was failing with a permission uh, denied when trying to SSH into uh, the uh, update Jenkins uh, machine. Yeah. Okay. As... We need to check this carefully together. That yeah, it's related to one of the fix pull requests you've done recently, changing the user. Yes, I understand, but there is something wrong here that we need to check. Okay. We should not have permission issue because everything should be Jenkins Jenkins on that machine. It's not on that machine, it's SSH into another machine from the permanent agent. It's SSH into a permanent, another machine, and this machine 
denies the use of www dash data. And we shouldn't SSH to that machine as part of the test we should run. That's why there is something I might be missing unless you are pulling data out of it. But our change should pulling not data. never connect I'm to pulling it. data. Okay. I'm synchronizing a local folder on the permanent engine to be ISO on a, in a temporary folder uh, to avoid polluting the update center uh, main job. And to reproduce uh, test condition. Uh, okay. So that that's an okay. So that's a specific temporary job that you use. A side job, because... yeah. Okay. That is okay. helping me updating my local temp folder as source for the. Uh, okay. We have in our test branch. Okay. Uh, most probably you need that folder to you need to change the user. Uh, the connect the user used for the connection and had the subsequent uh, uh, you have a schmod ch mod flag on air sync because you are air syncing data back from pkg so you can ch mod while the transfer to the destination since the destination is the local file system it should be changed to www and of course you need to change the user use for the air sync connection but okay, I see. It's just we never propagate it to your uh, temporary job, the change that has been applied. Okay, makes sense. Uh, don't forget that we will have to hand over so I can take your work once you will be in holidays. Uh, but okay. Right now until Friday, I'll let you work on this unless you need me. Like if you don't find uh, an easy solution for what you just described, for instance, uh, I don't mind helping here. So if it's, is there something else to add on the next steps or questions? Mm, some little de technical detail I ask you later. How okay. you the potential file and stuff like that. Okay. So the goal, a uh, reminder for the upcoming milestone is we will hand over since survey is going off, but the goal is for us to have a fully working system um, with the two services column. So we can resume the, uh, the performance benchmark and the functional validation. Anything else? Okay, third top priority is the new, the new cluster on Azure this time. Uh, so, uh, specified the network naming and sizing and validated in pair with survey. So thanks survey um, for the help. So uh, we have documented the initial architectural choices. We have discussed about the convention. I still have to report the new not pool convention we discussed this morning, Hervé. I haven't done yet. Um, network, uh, at least initial has been created. So now the work in progress is initial cluster creation. Uh, just a few notes on the specification. We will try, so we don't have spot instances, neither I took, to, so we are using spot on Azure. Uh, we don't need to use spot instances for this one. So that means we should have way more reliable uh, uh, pods. Um, EKS performances versus cost is awful, honestly. <laughs> That's terrible when we see for the same amount of cost, the size of the machines we can have here, we can expect to have uh, uh, an increase in memory on the pods used for building plugins or for the bomb builds. Uh, way faster IOs, so that's a good thing. We can envision having IRM64 and Windows support soon um, for this one, but not, not part of that pull request right now. We're just mapping from the current status to this one. The goal is to shut down DigitalOcean and Amazon clusters that are used by CI Jenkins IO to use only this one. Uh, in terms of network, we will try to use the best of breed of what we learned during the past 18 months on Azure. Uh, so no IPv6, but we will use the latest uh, internal network name overlay 
that's a way for us to be able to scale uh, at to the, the cluster to a bigger size without having to provision all the IPs in our subnets and avoid overlaps. Performances should be good. We should have ACP only internal and not available, available publicly, which is way better. We didn't have the time to spend on this until now, so that's the reason. Also, we are going to try what is called a private cluster. So the control plane of that cluster should only be reached through a private link internally, and we expect to have it only through the VPN. If it works properly, that means we can envision in the upcoming months to migrate the two production cluster to this public and private. The goal is to improve security by not being allowed to reach publicly the API control plane, even if today we have IP restriction. With this one, we will need to use the VPN instead. And a few, uh, few other elements. Did I miss something, Hervé? Okay. Uh, that's all so, for the cluster. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you mentioned that we will, in fact, shut down the AWS and the DigitalOcean clusters so that we reduce their costs to, to much less. Exactly. Okay. And now reestablishing them is is a workable thing. It's not a not an enormous amount of effort. No, it will be easy because we have Terraform definition. Okay. So the goal is the goal is just for us to keep the credits. So we could move that workloads again on AWS and Digital Ocean in September or August. Thank you. Private uh, API and better outbound network performances. Uh, so yes. Uh, so we expect this milestone to have a cluster to be created. Um, where could we have surprises here will be the new features such as private network might require the alternative and destroying, require, recreating the cluster because some parameters require recreating a new cluster. So if we fail or if we miss something, we will have to iterate. And a network connection might be an issue. So that's what I will work on the upcoming days. Any question? Nope, okay. Next uh, issue in terms of importance. So Datadog plugin. Um, so reminder, uh, the release 700 of the Datadog plugin that has been deployed to CI Jenkins IO and Infra CI last week, corrupted the build history. Um, with two main consequences. The first one is visual. The builds are marked as 1st January 1917 due to a, a bug. That was a bug, a major bug. Uh, that's the third time that it happened in the past months for us. Uh, that means first, uh, now if we need to upgrade or keep using that plugin, we need to take a snapshot of the data before upgrading. We need to be careful that one is sensitive because it could corrupt the whole build history. And the second consequences was build were marked as stuck because when Jenkins was scanning for the build XML file, it was failing to parse them and was seeing them as currently running even though they were already built. And since the last time was weird, everything was stuck like it was zombies jobs. That was blocked uh, bomb, but uh, a lot more. Uh, we reported the issue to the Datadog uh, repository. Uh, the consequence is that there, we, we had to remove the plugin from the update center because it's a major corruption. So we decided to remove Datadog plugin from Infra CI, our private controller. Main reason is that the risk and benefits balance is not good for infra CI. We don't use CI observability or specific metrics. So we were able to remove it to avoid taking risk because that would slow us down on delivering new elements. However, for CI Jenkins IO, the question remains because we might still need that observability and these metrics for monitoring CI Jenkins IO and for monitoring the bomb builds and understanding how it behaves. So the proposal I have today, since Datadog was really swift to publish a, patch, a patched version, 
Uh, my proposal is that we keep using Datadog observability plugin on CI Jenkins IO for now, but we need extra care when there is an update to be sure we don't do the, the same error as last week. That means uh, we need, I need to write a runbook here explaining how to update Datadog. I'm not sure, Mark, if there is a way to block the plugin to be updated uh, with the usual uh, UI and there, maybe... There, unfortunately, there is not. There's not a way to say inside Jenkins, mark this as please don't update me without talking to somebody. There, there okay. just isn't that facility. Okay, so that means we need to be extra careful for not updating all plugins. That's my fault this time. Well, and, uh, and we, in general, we expect that our plugin upgrades are safe and clean, right? We, this one yeah. was particularly frustrating. So I think, I think upgrading it was a very reasonable thing to do. It just had a very, very unreasonable bug in it. Yeah. To be quite honest, that wasn't the best way I did it because I should have focused like Daniel tend to do only on the plugins that were part of the security at the Azure first wait one hour and then update the others. So mistake is on me. However, for Datadog, we need a, caref a specific careful ear because yeah, we need backup uh, of CI Jenkins. Is there any question, objection to the proposal, things to clarify on that topic? So that means I need a runbook. And I need to to play the runbook to update to 701 and see if it works before completing that task. Is that okay for everyone? Cool. Uh, so hold back to 602 on ci.go. Let's keep that dog on ci.go and try 7.1.1. We'll keep observing, but need runbook to ensure we have backup if it fails again. Remove from infra.ci, weekly.ci as not used. Anything else on that topic? Hervé, uh, the subject of enabling shared uh, 2FA authentication on the NPM account for Jenkins CI, could you give us a summary, the next step on, on ETA for you? Uh, summary, the issue has to be done. With the tool you described in the runbook, I have took I write the runbook, I think I've got all I need. I have to execute. So. Shows mm -hmm. um, everything. So I'll let you know uh, on Friday if I got the time to do that, mm -hmm. or we should put it in a, yeah, either uh, on the ver or um, remove from my stone. Okay. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll delay until Irvis back end of May. Does it capture what we said? Is that okay for you? <laughs> so that means if you want to have access to that account once the two FA is enabled, you will need a GPG key and you will need to open an LDesk issue uh, so that we can encrypt the shared secrets. We are already using that for other accounts. We know that it works pretty well and the security level is uh, increased by using MFA. We don't rely only on the password, even if that MFA is shared. Thanks, Hervé. Um, Mark, could you report on adding the uh, .ask file on the release? Ah, yes. So so I started the work on it. Basil Crow reviewed the pull request and highlighted oh, cool. some disastrous mistakes that I made in my <laughs> implementation. Thankfully, that's why we have pull requests. 
he said, Mark, this will break the build completely when you when, when this don't do this and highlighted here are the things that you need to do. So the pull request highlights that it needs to be a refactoring and the refactoring will actually probably remove our final uses of the JV tool, right? We had this tool created that ha whose use has been narrowed to only this one case. And it's a Golang tool that is mm -hmm. unmaintained at the moment. There's no reason for us to keep using it since the technique that it's using is easy to do in the shell. And I can do it from the make file without needing to use a separate executable. Uh, so it's it's just easier to for us to this last remaining usage of JV is an easy replacement as part of this re improvement. Uh, what he noted is we've got duplication of code in the packaging repository and the release repository. We need to bring those together, unify them, and let's make it better while we're doing it. Duplicated code between package. packaging, uh, yeah, pack Jenkins slash pack. I think it's actually packaging and Absolutely. Jenkins, and and I one yeah, and one of those is in the infra repository or mm -hmm. organization. One is in the Jenkins CI. Yes, so just, work in progress. Just a note so. because I I started uh, playing around with the code between both, mm. uh, because yeah, uh, don't forget that infra team doesn't have maintainer access on the packaging repository. And I believe it's why some there was so much code that Olivier wrote here because he wasn't maintainer on packaging. And for every code that has been in packaging that should be generic and not specific to the infra. And as far as I remember, we had, for instance, the make publish targets are inside packaging, but they are absolutely infra related. So, I believe Basil already pointed that out and with, mm. with for good reasons, but just be careful that maybe we might need to add uh, some uh, infra member maintainer of this one if we need to unblock a release at a given moment on time that will be heavier. Uh, I believe I might be, but I'm not sure. Just have that, that in mind. Don't grow uh, the scope of your pull request due to that, but have this in mind. Well, but but you, pro you point out a good organizational thing that infra team members not having admin access to packaging is probably a bad choice right because when it's when a release breaks you need the ability to make corrections as needed and and so that's that's a good point if you could make a note in there that uh consider the admin per, or the admin permissions of the two repositories because we do need to think about do the right people have the right permissions to get the jobs done that we do? Yeah, we do. I think the experience on the BOM uh, uh, repository show that, so BOM is a bit, is different, but um, we don't serve a lot. We don't have, a, we are not useful of being maintainer on the BOM. It was just for some experiment initially. Right. And I believe we shouldn't be maintainer on the packaging because the ah. the provided value for the Jenkins user is different. That doesn't mean we cannot contribute, right? But it's just that what should be in Jenkins CI packaging should only be a concern for the end user who want to, let's say, uh, build and change the packaging, propose a contribution on Jenkins packaging. But the mm. environment is our responsibility. So for instance, moving away from packaging, the, the logic that say, hey, in order to publish the war file, you need to send it to that package in virtual machine, that one should be on release, for instance. Uh -huh. So there is a, a set of multiple changes here, but yeah, the responsibilities should uh, are split on two repository for reasons, and we should stay admin on release. It's just that if there are administration or environment related things, we might need to collaborate until it's moved to release. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so I, I look forward to reviews. I'm sure I will make more mistakes as I'm implementing this set of changes. And I, I, it feels like we need an infra review in addition to Basel's very yeah. good review. We want to be sure that we we consider all the all the aspects. Thanks. So I have to drop off. I apologize. Yeah. I've got no another problem. meeting that I'm late. It's one hour top, so we are late here. Thanks. So we cover all the 
major elements. For the rest, these are minor uh, issues that we will keep forward on the next milestones. Um, we have two infra CI specific changes uh, that might happen or might not this week. Um, this one is on hold until this May. So nothing for that milestone um, to do. I've started for both of them. I've started analysis and I have a local test. It's just I wasn't able to push them due to the Datadog surprise. That one is also on me. And finally, the Jenkins mirror. I've commented uh, same to do. Um, so Hervé, can I ask you to take to just to ping our RCS friends just to know what is the status of them uh, enabling HTTPS? I, I believe it's RCS. Let me. Sh and I'm taking care of the other. Yeah. It's just an email before you go on the holidays. And this one, I'm taking it again. Is that OK for you? Um, I think that's all. We have a new issue that has been opened uh, by a WinPy contributor. Ah, shame. I should. I would have wanted to discuss that with Mark. Um, I will add a message on this one. We delayed the answer from the infra team. We need to evaluate technically what it means for us, and we don't have the bandwidth at least for the upcoming week. So I propose that we move the discussion to next week, uh, because that is a highly technical discussion regarding who is responsible of the CD workflow. It used to be in Fratim in when uh, we had Garrett Evans working on specifically on the JEP. Now it has been moved to other people. So I'm not sure. It sounds like it's a shared responsibility. So let's take the time to discuss it. And we are only two or three today. So let's delay in two weeks. I will comment on the issue. Do you have anything else? We don't have new triage issue. So we can close the meeting and see each other next week if you don't have anything else. OK, see you next week. Bye bye. Bye.